today I'd like to discuss with you the phenomenon that we call blaming the victim. And as a starting point I have to point out that the consequences, the adverse effects of crime are usually much more severe than the victim would have anticipated. And the victim therefore would expect some sympathy and some empathy by the bystanders and by family and by officials running the criminal justice system. But the opposite is quite often the case and in, in actual reality many victims are faced with a lot of questions by the authorities and these questions are perceived to be quite hostile by the victim because the nature of the question is to allocate blame for the victimization on the part of the victim. So the standard example, of course, is the, the rape victim reporting the crime and the officer taking down the report asking the woman, well, why were you on the street late that night? Or why were you dressed so, um, so scarcely? And now that's an obsolete example, but the same thing happens in all kinds of crime where the officials actually seek factors which put the blame for the victimization on the victim. And why is that? We have tried to understand that. And it is because all of us, including criminal justice officials, try to believe in a just world. And in a just world, people who behave in a normal way will not be subject to crime. So if someone is victimized, there must be, and they are trying to look for some way of attributing the crime to the victim. And as long as we, as researchers, as practitioners, as we are aware of this psychological mechanism of self-defense in order to preserve your own peace of mind, then we can actually change our behavior and show much more understanding and much more empathy for the victims who deserve our sympathy, who deserve our respect.